Okay, welcome to Kojo's Math. I'm Mrs. Cohen, and today we're going to be talking about exploring slope. Well, slope is defined as rise over run. How far, when you're traveling straight ahead and you're walking in a straight line, that's the run, and how far, how fast do you rise up? If you think about you're coming upon a hill and you're walking, and that would be the slope, the relationship between the two, as you're going up and as you're going forward. What's the relationship? And you'll notice that it's designated by the lowercase m. That is really important because now anytime you see a lowercase m and they ask you what is m in the context of graphing, graphing, they're asking you for the slope of the line. The rise is associated with the y-axis because the y-axis is vertical. And the run is associated with the x-axis because the x-axis is horizontal. Now to find the slope of a line, you first need to identify two points because the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So I left out the line so I can show you how you go about that. So you first identify the two points on the line and you want to see what their relationship is. So to do that, we're going to create a right triangle. So this would be the line that connects the two points. And then we would do, we would, go, we would pick the two points and in this case we would go down and over. So the rise is dropping and how far, how far is the rise dropping? Well this is the point 44 and this is point 61. So from this point, 1, 2, 3, and then we go over 1, 2, so the slope is 3 over 2. Now, how did we go down? Did we go up or down from this point? We went down, so it's a negative 3. So we go down negative 3 and over positive 2. If we went from this point, 6, 1, and compared it to that point, then we would be going up 3 and our right triangle would be flipped over. But we would be going up 3 and to the left 2. And in that case, our slope would be 3 over negative 2. But remember, you cannot have a negative in the denominator. And you would use the fact that you're dividing a positive 3 by a negative 2. And a positive divided by a negative is a negative, And that would allow you to manipulate and pop it up to the numerator. So either way, the negative either can be in front as a negative 3 halves, or you can put it in the numerator. Okay. So, as we look at that, you want to remember how do you read a graph? You read it from left to right. And if the line falls from left to right, then you have a negative slope. If the line rises from left to right, you have a positive slope, because you're going up. If the line is horizontal from left to right, you have zero slope flat. And if the line is vertical from left to right, so you come across it and it goes straight up and down, it has no slope. And what if we do not have a graph to look at so that we can identify two points on the line and draw a right triangle? And we don't have the ability to draw a quick sketch of a graph. Well, that takes us to slope formula. You will need to memorize this. And yes, every time you do a slope, finding the slope problem, you must identify this. You can't write it at the top of the page one time and say, well, that's my formula. For now, you have to write it every single time for every problem. And that says that M, and again, notice we're using a lower case M because that's identifying that we're looking for the slope of a line, equals Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1 over X sub 2 minus X sub 1. It's important to note that the sub 1 and the sub 2 is just a way to organize your data. And we have to have two points in order to use the slope formula. When we do that, we take the two points, and remember they're coordinate points, and they're listed as x, y. Well, some students get confused because when they see this x sub 1 and x sub 2, see how I put out, I took the two coordinate points and I labeled this the 1 point. And this the two point. So x sub 1, y sub 1 is the first point, the sub 1's. 
and x sub 2, y sub 2 is the second point that I've chosen to identify. What I do not do is I don't go x sub 1, y sub 2, x sub 2, y sub 1. It will not work that way because you're mixing up the data in your comparisons. You can't do that. You have to compare it consistently. So here I have the point 3, negative 4, and the point 2, 1. And notice I've labeled it. A lot of students choose not to label it, and that's when they, get, they make mistakes. They forget which, they, they're in a hurry, and they plug in those numbers, and they plug them in like x sub 1, y sub 2, and x sub 2, y sub 1, because they didn't take the time to quickly label it. So you'll notice I decided this one, and I do a little bit of planning ahead when I look at these, because I know I'm subtracting the two numbers. So if I have a negative number, I'm going to kind of play around with that, so it's thinking ahead in my planning. So I have 3, negative 4, and 2, 1. I've labeled it, this one is the sub 1 number, x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. You can't go x sub 1, y, x sub 2, because this is an x coordinate, and this is a y coordinate. So you have to have an x and y in each one. I just simply plug it in, 1 minus negative 4, yes, I must show that, over 2 minus 3. 1 minus negative 4, 2 minus 3. The confusion is some students will write 1 minus negative 4, but then they'll write, instead of writing 2 minus 3, they'll get confused and go 3 minus 2 if they don't take the time to label their values of their coordinate points. When I get it, I get 6 over, oh wait, that's, that should be a 4, I just caught that, I just had the work wrong, because 1 plus 4 over negative 1 becomes 5 over negative 1, and you can see that I pushed up the negative in front or into the numerator, equals m. You can plug either point into either one. I could have set this up as x sub 1, y sub 1, and x sub 2, y sub 2. It doesn't matter. I'm still going to get the right answer. So it depends on how you are thinking of head so that you can avoid any kind of sign problems with the negative. Now I want you to pause the video and I want you to try these. Okay. This is the work that you should have. In the first one you'll see that I've labeled my coordinate points. I had to write the formula. You have to write the formula every time. You could put m equals, it doesn't matter. And here, m is equal to negative 3, but I want to know the rise over the run, so I write it as negative 3 over 1. Because slope, you have to identify the rise and the run. Don't just write negative 3. Over here, this one's interesting because when we get down here, we have 4 minus 4 in the denominator. And what do you know about 0 under the line? It's undefined. One thing right now, you're going to have to remember the difference between 0 slope and no slope. If 0 is under the line, it's undefined, but it is no slope. You don't... It's undefined, but you call it no slope. And you know immediately that you're dealing with a vertical line. And where is it crossing on which axis? It's crossing on the x-axis. So x is equal to 4 is the equation. You should be able to tell me that immediately. And you'll note the key here, the dead giveaway, is the 4 is repeating with the x value. So x is equal to 4. No matter what y is, x is going to be 4. So it's a vertical line. And then the last one is where the y repeats. Two, the point is 2, 3, and the point 0, 3. We plug it into the formula. We get 0 over negative 2. But any number divided, 0 divided by any number is 0. So this one is 0 slope. That has a value. That's a flat road on the highway. So we have 0 slope. We know it's a horizontal line and it's crossing the y-axis. So the answer, the equation would be y equals 3. You need to memorize that. You need to know it and you need to remember that. And then the under, if you don't quite get it, it will come together. But you've got to memorize it right now. Now what I want you to do is I want you to try this. Stop the parallel lines have the same slope. And Try line AB and compare it to line CD and see if they are parallel. To be parallel, they have to have the same slope. 
So you're going to use the slope formula to determine if these have the same slope. So pause the video and do this problem. Okay, I'm not writing all this up here, um, but I will tell you that yes, they are parallel because the slopes, both of them have slope 5 halves. So the rise is 5 and the run is 2. Rise is 5 as it keeps going up. So it would be 5, 2, 10, 4, 15, 6. That would be the point if you made a point of emphasis from the same point every single time. All right, that's it for today. Write two things that you've learned about slope and lines, and then if you have any questions, bring one question to class, and we'll discuss that on our next class. At our next class, have a great day, and I'll see you soon.